Welcome to NSTA Podcasts. In this segment, Catherine McNeil and Lima Berland will talk about the importance of explanations and solutions. So if you look into the frameworks and the language around it, they talk a lot about how constructing explanations and designing solutions are key practices of both professional scientists and engineers. And engaging students in these practices can really help them understand how knowledge is constructed in both science and engineering. And we also think that developing these practices can help students become more critical consumers of the products of science. So we'll use this language throughout the presentation. This idea that the explanations and solutions are the products of what scientists and engineers, engineers are creating. So we want students to be critical of these, both if they end up in a science field themselves, but also if they don't. This is something that's important for, for all individuals to be able to do. Other reasons that it can be important is that engaging in these practices can absolutely help kids develop a more in-depth understanding of the disciplinary ideas of science. It can help them understand these core concepts in more detail because they're using these concepts to make sense of the world as they construct explanations and designing solutions. So actually using these ideas can help them develop a richer understanding of it. There's also this idea that the focus on using evidence is a 21st century skill that you use evidence in science, but you also use it across the domains in other content areas such as history, language arts, mathematics, as well as outside in your everyday lives. So this is something that we want students to be able to do, to be able to construct a claim, support it in evidence, uh, critique claims constructed by others, both in the school setting and outside of the school setting. <coughs> So what we have here is we took some of the language from the Next Generation Science Standards from the May draft that Ted mentioned before. And if you haven't looked at it, there's a table that goes along with it, which I find very useful. So they have tables that have the different practices, and they articulate what those practices look like across K2, 3, 5, 6, 8, and 9, 12. So this is the language from that table around the practice of explanation. And it says, the products of science are explanations, and the products of engineering are solutions. Specifically, explanations in science. The goal of science is the construction of theories that provide explanatory accounts of the world. A theory becomes accepted when it has multiple lines of empirical evidence and greater explanatory power of phenomena than previous theories. So there's two main ideas that we see here. One being how or why phenomena occur. And the other, this idea that it's relying on evidence. So here we have <clears throat> three sample explanation performances that we selected. And we selected these in order to cut across elementary, middle, and high school and to illustrate these two themes that we see going on. This one idea in terms of explaining how or why phenomena occur, and this other idea around using evidence. We also selected these because we wanted to cut across different content areas. So the first one from elementary is from earth science. The second one for middle school is for life science, and the third one from high school is for um, physical science, specifically chemical reactions. So if you read the language of these, you'll see that in each case, the students are trying to make sense of the world around them. They're trying to understand how or why something is occurring, and they're specifically using evidence or data in order to do that. <clears throat> And we, when we look across the grade levels, what we see happening is in terms of the phenomena, the nature of the claim is changing. We see in grades three through five a simpler claim, one which doesn't have as many variables in terms of ex explaining what's happening. And then when you get into high school, you get more claims that are about systems. They're bringing in more different variables and they're becoming more complex to really understand a phenomena. The other thing that we see occurring is the use of evidence. This connects across from elementary, middle, and high school, but the way the evidence is used, it becomes more complex. In grades three, five, it just says identify evidence that supports an explanation, versus in high school, it says apply scientific reasoning, theory, and models to link evidence to claims and show why the data are adequate for the explanation. So that becomes more complex as well. So the other practice that's part of this is the um, constructing of solutions, kind of the more engineering side of things. And again, we want to emphasize the language that we're seeing um, throughout the framework, which is that 
science and engineering are driving towards these products of an explanation or an engineering uh, solution. So um, specifically for engineering, the solution, um, they define it by saying the goal of engineering is to find a systematic solution to problems that is based on scientific knowledge and models of the material world. And then the optimal choice depends on how well the proposed solutions meet criteria and constraints. And it's this aspect that, um, seem, that connects it to the explanation language around evidence, that here we're trying to solve a problem um, which could be seen as parallel to constructing an explanation, and the solution needs to be based on uh, how well your solution or your possible solutions are meeting the criteria. And so that would be seen as more as the evidence component. Um, it's the, the evidence of the performance um, that is meeting this pre-specified criteria. And the criteria in the engineering world can come from user needs, it can come from constraints, um, requirements, things like that. We're going to see um, some examples later on in the talk of different sorts of solutions, but I want to just mention quickly that um, it varies widely from what you might be imagining, a physical product that um, students are building to uh, sketches um, or paragraphs describing things depending on what the problem that's being solved is in, in the context. Um, sorry, remember how to move forward. So some sample performances um, around solutions um, include things like at the elementary level, um, you know, using magnets to move an object and, um, and then moving through to high school where we're talking about um, designing something to create or maintain sustainability for local ecosystems. Um, all of these um, Unlike with the explanations where we saw a really clear progression that was laid out um, with specific things like the claim becoming more causal and more variables coming into the picture, that is less clear um, currently in the framework for how the um, solutions will progress. Instead, I think the progression seems to be around the content of, of what they're designing solutions for. So we wanted to talk about where explanations and solutions fit um, with the eight practices, with the seven other practices. Um, and I'm sure um, if anyone has been attending the other talks, everyone has a different representation of this that foregrounds their practice. Um, Kate and I keep coming back to this language um, that, it, that um, explanations and solutions are the product for um, for science and engineering. And with that in mind, we see them as the outcome. So you're using the other six or seven practices um, to construct an explanation um, coming out on the right. We also, you'll see, put engaging an argument from evidence in the box with constructing explanations and designing solutions. And that's because, as Kate was highlighting, so much of the work around explanation construction is around using evidence to construct your explanation or to design your solution and then defending and talking about why that's happening um, or why your explanation um, is, is plausible. So, so they're really, um, they work together quite a bit. And we wanted to put up uh, a big quote to, um, coming from the framework to kind of underscore this idea that explanation and argumentation are really working um, hand in hand and kind of happening in parallel. This is a long quote, but the gist of it is that we really, as we're developing an explanation, we're improving upon them through this process of argumentation by justifying our explanations with the evidence, by comparing different possible explanations and evaluating those possibilities. That's how we identify strengths and weaknesses and um, as it says here, it's how we figure out why the wrong answer is wrong to develop a deeper understanding. And so we see these practices as really happening um, in parallel. And in fact, in practice, it often happens that we'll get a single product, um, the explanation and the argument 
wrapped up together, and that's um, how the framework is, is often talking about it and how we'll continue talking about it today. Mm -hmm.